Let's do this on three. One, two, three. This is my Bible. It is Yah's word. It is the inspired and fallible word of Yah. It is a lamp unto my feet. Blessed are those who hear the word of Yah and keep it. I find out who I am in the pages contained herein. This is my Bible. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is well today. I'm going to have an eye-opening message. Uh, this is another one of those where my sermon's actually short, but I have to explain everything to you. So the sermon's real, real short, so you won't be here long, except for when I have to explain everything for us to get there. <laughs> so today's message is titled Perseverance. Now, my older brother is going to think this sermon is about his company, but it is not. <laughs> But the message today is about perseverance and how vital perseverance is to our lives, to our faith, to everything that we do. So let's define the word before we continue. Because it's not a word that we use. And a lot of times, in, especially in American culture, we say words all the time that we don't know how to spell or define. We just say them and just because everybody else says them. So let's look at it. The word, oh no, I have it written on here. <laughs> now, before we do, before we define it, let's look at the difference between perseverance and endurance. Because sometimes the nearly inspired version, I mean the New International Version, translates perseverance to endurance at times. So, Perseverance is a nice graph here. Endurance is when you go through difficulty. Perseverance is when you go through adversity. So there is a difference there. So we're going to talk about perseverance. So let's define perseverance. First definition is the steady persistence in a course of action, a purpose, a state, etc. Especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, or discouragement. Does anybody have some discouragement? Anybody have some obstacles? Anybody have some difficulties? So perseverance includes all of those things. In the theological sense, and let's look and with and the definition. When you look this up on dictionary.com, the first definition is what I said. The second definition says. The theological definition is continuance in a state of grace to the end, leading to eternal salvation. So in a theological sense, when the Bible mentions the word perseverance, it means leading to salvation. So perseverance leads to salvation. According to the dictionary, perseverance leads to, def to, to salvation, right? We have proof of it, right? We all can believe me, okay? But let's look at some scripture, because the dictionary is wrong about a lot of things. But let's see what scripture says, which we just did our, our chant about it as the infallible word of Yah, right? Amen. So let's go to Romans 12, verse 12 going to go through some capital scriptures today. And it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So what is Paul telling the church in Rome? That affliction can and will occur. Because you wouldn't have to be patient in affliction if there was none, right? And I'm not saying we're defeated. This is not defeatist mentality, right? Because we are more than conquerors we are more than victors we are on the winning side just jump to the conclusion there i don't want the devil to get a stronghold in your mind well pastor said this paul said it so it must be true paul tells the church in rome be patient in your affliction why is he, why would you when we tell our kids to be patient we're telling them to be patient because something better is coming so we're not staying in the affliction. Something better than the affliction is coming after it. 
So, so don't get bent out of shape about your current affliction. Something greater is coming. But he tells them to be faithful in their prayer. Are we faithful in our prayers? When we get the first sign where something doesn't look like what we prayed for, are we still faithful? The more true translation for faithful here, because the same word that's used that is translated or excuse me, transliterated, there's a difference. For faithful here is perseverance. So we need to persevere in prayer. Let's see what else Paul tells the chosen people in Rome. Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with Yah through our master, Jesus Christ. That's a message right there. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of Yah. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our good days. Is that what it says? See, if you don't just listen to me, we, we, we are babying y'all sometimes by having all the scriptures up here. and We lost the practice of flipping through and finding it. Rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And that hope does not disappoint us because Yah has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. So Paul knows that suffering is part of the way. Nowhere in scripture does it say, Rainbows and butterflies, coast is clear. Clear sailing all the way. Never says it. It says, just you wait. It's going to get tough. Because again, when Paul is writing these letters, his friends light the streets at night. And I'm not saying with flashlights or lanterns, his friends are lit on fire alive and are the street lights for the neighborhood in Rome. So he knows it's not rainbows, butterflies, coast is clear, clear sailing all the way. He's like, it's going to be some suffering. And then when we suffer, it'll produce perseverance. And then that perseverance will produce our character. And our character will produce hope. So perseverance is key. Because Paul believed as much. He believed that the oppression that he and his people were under, whether that be the by the Romans who, li who are lighting their, his friends at night, or by the religious leaders, because they aren't the same. The religious leaders and the government are not the same. Even back then, there was a separation of church and uh, temple and state. Perseverance through that suffering would produce character and that character would produce hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Now, this word character is the Greek word dokumen. Not going to Greek you guys out all day. There's just one. Dokumen means to go through something and prove yourself while going through it. Are you going to prove yourself while going through this tough time? Or are you going to prove the devil right? Who are you going to prove right? Because I know that a lot of us don't like this story. But in the story of Job, two people had an idea about what Job would do. Did they not? Yeah. One person said he's going to do this. One person said, no, he's going to curse his maker. The only reason why he loves you is because life is good. And then life wasn't good, and Job persevered and stayed, stayed on the course. We need to prove ourselves while going through something. 
So we got a little bit of Paul's perspective perspective on perseverance. And Paul's a great guy. Wrote some nice letters. But let's get the Messiah's perspective because his word is above all. Luke chapter 8, verse 15. Now this is when Jesus is talking about the seeds that get planted in the ground. So when somebody hears the word, he talked about all the different uh, things that happen to each seed. But the seed on good soil, so this is the good one because there was one that died and one that, I was ready this time. (laughs) There was one that died. There was one that was eaten by a bird. But he said, but the good one, the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, Provide a crop. So, again, uh, we went on. I didn't go over this whole story because we've done it in the the past couple of months. But he's talking about all the seeds that happen. There's bad things that happen. One seed immediately dies. It opens up and withers. There's no soil on it. One seed gets eaten right away. The seed that's good, the good example, has to persevere. So the good example is going to have something bad that happens to it. There is no seed that just is great. Jesus said it. Paul said it. When we get through some other stories, you're going to see it. There's going to be negativity that occurs. We're in a battle. We're in a war. We have two wars that dominate the news every day in Ukraine and in Israel. Nobody's just sitting around licking lollipops walking down the street. That's not the picture they show us on the news. (laughs) so by persevering with the word because that's what jesus is talking about here we can only persevere with the word not with man's word not with our husband's word not with our wives word not with our jobs word only with the word can we persevere we will produce a crop we will produce fruit and it will be good fruit let's keep learning about perseverance James chapter 1 verse 2 through 4 consider it pure joy my brother so what is he about to look he said it's pure joy so he's about to talk about lollipops walking down the street right oh you know you know who's talking whenever consider it pure joy My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, not one kind, not when you face financial troubles, not when you face employment troubles, not when you face troubles at home, many troubles. Y'all know what faith y'all signed up for? Some of y'all read the nice parts. Jesus wept. Yeah. Yeah. Don't we all? But we don't get the nice parts unless we persevere. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know. So when you have those many kinds, you know. Remember that part because we always forget to know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Because we've had some things in our lives that have tested our faith, have we not? Why did this happen to me? I remember asking that question last year. And it was the loudest I ever heard y'all before. Clearest I ever heard them. Which is weird because I'm asking this is a tough thing. You think the good things would be clear and loud. No, you got to seek those out. When I'm asking a negative thing, why is this happening to me? And he clearly immediately answered. He didn't have to wait nothing. He said, why not? I don't know who you thought you were that you weren't going to have no trials of many kinds. My servant James tried to tell you. So when you have that testing of faith and are asking why, let me give you, I'm going to pass on the answer to you. Why not? Continuing on. Perseverance must finish its work. 
It's a work that is happening. You know, you can't rush work. Like, if you try to rush cooking that turkey on Thanksgiving, what's going to happen with that turkey? <laughs> you try to rush cooking, it don't even got to be Thanksgiving. You try to rush cooking that chicken you got tonight. <laughs> You're going to be sick the rest of the week. <laughs> right. <laughs> we want turkey Thanksgiving turkey results with hot dog prep time faith. Right. <laughs> Just got to boil the water a little bit. My turkey be ready. That's not how it works. This isn't a microwave kind of faith. Remember, Daniel Daniel thought it was a microwave faith. What that messenger from heaven say? I heard you, little prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Other things going on in the world right now. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature. Well, that's touched somebody. And complete. That touched somebody else. Because we got a lot of incomplete folks when it comes to this faith. Not lacking anything. Now, we, whenever we talk about lacking the American church, it's always dollar signs. James ain't say nothing about no money here. So when we have our faith and it grows, it gets tested. What is that? It's a cliche saying, and I don't like it. Because it's not scripture, but it actually is kind of correct. And bigger levels, bigger devils. <laughs> like, I don't want to be fighting no devils. This man has enough fight for me on earth. I have enough fight for myself when I do the wrong thing. Amen. I don't want to fight a whole bunch of devils. I want to fight me. I want it's me versus me, not me versus no devils. So when we have our faith and it grows and it gets tested, we are developing perseverance and the thing about perseverance is that even during the battles we lose we're still persevering yeah. that's the difference between perseverance and endurance endurance means that you won you you lasted through the fight and went the whole way but sometimes we lose battles not the war wars decided right mm -hmm. but in wars there's sometimes battles that get lost So, the dictionary is lining up with scripture, right? Remember our dictionary definition? Amen. All right, let's make sure I didn't look. I can start over. I'll pull a pastor and start over. <laughs> but the next verse is to highlight just how important perseverance was viewed by the early church. Josephine. Josephine. <laughs> It's always folks to be late. It's always the pastor's wife. <laughs> the <elder. laughs> We're going to persevere through the interruptions. Second Peter chapter one, verse three through six. Now this is vital. If you ain't been paying attention, please pay attention here. His divine power has given us everything, say everything, everything, we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, this very reason, all that I just said, for this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, perseverance, is the last step on the path to godliness, to acting righteous in our walk. Now, verse 8 states, 
If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our master, Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they may have been cleansed from their past sins. Perseverance is vital in our faith walk. This path is going to get bumpy. It's going to get rocky. Your faith is going to get tested. Scripture literally says so. But we are going to keep going. We are going to be battle tested. We have been, some of us have been, all of us have been battle tested. We have the scars to prove it. Remember when people are telling stories about how they got certain scars on their body, we have those scars that tell the story of our perseverance. Now, this is not me accepting hardship or poverty or sickness, heaven forbid. But if anything comes my way, I'm going to persevere through it. I'm not going to stop in it. I want to touch on one of the greatest stories in scripture about someone persevering. So my sermon's actually about to start now. <laughs> But I had to explain to you how important perseverance was. And it's not the story of Job. It's the story of Joseph. So we know this story, but I want to touch on the highlights of it. I'm talking about Joseph in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis. Now, Joseph, excuse me, Jacob, now known as Israel, has a son with his wife he actually loved and names him Joseph. Later on, Joseph, excuse me, Jacob, Israel, gives Joseph a coat of many colors. He was looking fly. Now, again later on, Joseph has a dream that gets interpreted by his brothers. He tells his brothers a story about a dream about things bowing down to him. His brothers interpret the dream and say, you think we're going to bow to you? Genesis chapter 37 verse 5 states that once Joseph's brothers heard his dreams, they hated him all the more. The conclusion of that is you don't got to tell everybody your dreams. Because some people are going to hate you just because of your dreams. Because if you're able to be successful in your dreams, your success is a reminder of their failure. One day. Joseph is on his way to check on his brothers, but they see his little bright coat from a mile away. They conspire to kill him, but then one of them decides not to, and then they end up selling them into slavery. But they tell their father, Israel, that he died. So Jacob gets sold, excuse me, it's all these J's. Right. Joseph gets sold into slavery. Now this should be the end of Joseph's story. Joseph spent his days as a slave and dies as a slave. Story over. But no, he perseveres. He ends up in the house of a high-ranking official named Potiphar. He is skilled at everything Potiphar put him in charge of. Every time Potiphar put Joseph in charge of a job, it was successful, it was prosperous. And Potiphar's like, bro, you can just run everything. I'm just going to sit here. But one day, Potiphar's wife, she went back to her thoughting days when she used to be a wild girl on the south side of Egypt. <laughs> she tries to seduce Joseph, but Joseph wasn't having it. Joseph's clothes get ripped, and Potiphar's wife tells her husband, Potiphar, that Joseph tried to rape her. Now, Joseph didn't have the heart or the courage to tell Potiphar that his wife was trying to bust it wide open. <laughs> That's just to make sure y'all paying attention. <laughs> right. Y'all don't be understanding. I could be up here and talk Hebrew and Greek and y'all not going to remember nothing. When I ask y'all three months later what I talked about, you're not going to know. 
But y'all will remember, Potiphar's wife was trying to bust it wide open. Y'all will remember that. <laughs> y'all sitting there acting like. Now I know y'all lies for real. <laughs> I know who y'all have busted it wide open on. <laughs> Why y'all trying to act all red in the face? Sip from the sponsor. Got to calm down in here. Because y'all acting like y'all been saved your whole life. Like, y'all realize I know y'all for real, right? This ain't Facebook where you can put a story up and present something. I know y'all's real lives. Okay. Y'all can stop acting like y'all some Mormons or something. <laughs> so Joseph gets thrown in prison. This should be the end of Joseph's story. Joseph spends the rest of his days in prison and dies in prison. But no, he perseveres. While in prison, he meets two other people that worked for Pharaoh, and there, and they have wild dreams that Joseph interprets. He tells one that he will be out in three days and be back with Pharaoh, but the, the other one will be out in three days, but he'll be executed when he gets out. Both things happen. Joseph tells the one to remember him to, it says, Remember me when you get out. Remember the your, your boy Joseph. But his friend doesn't remember him. Two years passed. Again, should be the end of Joseph's story. And But then, Pharaoh is haunted by dreams. The guy that was in prison with Joseph does indeed remember Joseph and his ability to interpret dreams. Joseph is summoned and interprets the dreams, and explains that there's going to be a time of plenty, and then a time of famine. So Pharaoh puts Joseph in charge of storing food. Egypt becomes the only country in the region with food to spare, and neighboring countries come to visit and trade with him. Uh, and I've used this slide before, but Joseph is actually written on the walls in Egypt. And I'm blanking on his name right now because that's not important to the story, but he's actually written in the wall in color, and it shows him directing people to store grain. So the next time some, somebody woke tells you that the Bible sold everything off of the walls and all this is fake and Jesus is actually Horus and Krishna and Isha and all this other stuff, doesn't line up. Never does. So eventually, because Egypt is the only country with plenty of food, Eventually, his brothers come to trade for food, and Joseph recognizes them, but they don't recognize him. Does anybody remember why they don't recognize him? Because what? Because Egyptians shave their beards, Hebrews do not. So, when it, I, I'm sure you've seen a video on YouTube or Facebook or something. When like a dad shaves his face and then his kids don't recognize him, they start crying when they see him. Because you look totally different. So through a lot of hijinks and other aspects that we've gone through, the entire family of Joseph, so Jacob and all the other kids, end up coming to the feet of Joseph and they end up bowing to him. And he says, what man meant for evil, Yah intended for good. So they all get together, and then all of the brothers and Israel, they're all blessed with big, fat portions of land and livestock, and they're living the good life. Joseph persevered. Now, there's no portion where we see Joseph in this entire story. And it's a lot of chapters. I summed that up very succinctly, but it's a long story. But there's no point in the story where Joseph communicates with Yah. His father spoke and wrestled and was blessed by the heavenly son. Joseph's great-grandfather was a friend of the father and had a covenant, right? His great-grandfather's Abraham. Abraham's the reason for it all. He had plenty of conversations with the father and the son. 
But Joseph was in the trenches. There was no holy place for him to have a conversation with Yah. He's in a wicked land. There was no tent of meeting with Joseph. Or he met any uh, travelers like Abraham did. He didn't wrestle with the heavenly son as his father did. He had no covenant like his grandfather had, his Isaac. And Joseph still persevered with what was installed to him by his father. So it didn't hit nobody like it should have, but it all saw right. Joseph had no scriptures to read to push him through. There was no Bible app. There was no U version. There was no chosen series to go and view with the congregation. He just had Yah in his heart to push him through. And only his only experience with Yah was the words that his father told him. We lack that kind of faith when we have access to everything. Joseph just had access to words from his father. He had no tassels to remind him of the commandments because there were no commandments at this time. And this is huge. Now, I heard this from another pastor, but I'm going to say it a lot better than he did. So I'm going to say it's mine. Because do you know what Joseph did have outside of the words that were instilled from his father? Joseph had those dreams he had. He had the dreams that he was prosperous. He had the dreams that his family bowed to him. That's all he had. But those dreams... There was no jail in the dreams. There was no rape allegations or charges. There was no slavery. In the dream, there was prosperity in him being a ruler requiring his family to bow to him. The negative things in the dreams weren't there. The negative things of the future weren't there, only the positives. So we get a vision of the positive. We get a dream of the positive. The negatives aren't there because why would God want to show us negatives? Why would a father want to show their children the negative things? When I have prepared for you good things. The negative aspects weren't there, but Joseph knows. Yeah, I might have this right now. But I have that dream that he showed me. I don't need to go to church to hear it. I don't need to do this. I don't need to read no scriptures because there ain't no scriptures. He put something inside of me. So I know eventually that's where I'm going to end up. So we've all gotten visions of the future. So regardless of what. Hurdles and, and catastrophes we see today, we have to remember what he showed us. Amen. The bad things aren't going to be in your dreams. So keep persevering until you reach the dream that he has given you. Through all of this, Joseph persevered. When we persevere, we get tougher. When the when the same battle comes up again, we will not falter because we've pushed through. When we persevere, we get to the next level in life. In Isaiah chapter 48, Yah says that he has refined us through affliction. Yes. So if he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, yesterday he said we're going to push through some afflictions. Which means what? We're going to see some afflictions. We're not going to stay in the afflictions. We're not going to suffer in the afflictions. We're not going to be defeated by the afflictions. But we're going to have them. And we're going to get through them. Because that's what Yah said. If Yah said it, that's what's going to happen. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He has put us through the things for us to persevere so that we can be reflections of him. Because it's scripture, our capital verse said, perseverance on the godliness. We can't look like him unless we've been through it. So stop asking for that pretty life. Because you ain't never going to be like God if you don't go through something. This is his rules, his game that he's set up. So the rules are you got to go through something if you want to be like God. And I'm not trying to sound all woke and say people are gods, but... Even Jesus said, well, my father said that y'all would be on the gods. Why can't I say I'm the son of God? 
Now it's gonna be a certain one day too, but y'all not ready for that one yet. <laughs> Perseverance under godliness. We need to stop running away from things that are gonna persevere us. Thank you, God, for having a blessing to the reading of the word.